In simple terms, what are surge frictions? Well, surge is an economic activity. And by its economic activity, it says that you devote time and money to it to find something or find someone that gives you satisfaction. That satisfaction might be some economic return. It might be because you want to get into some kind of partnership. For example, there might be a worker who is without a job or a job that uh, she doesn't like now and is searching for another one. And we encounter this kind of activity all the time. You know, you, when people change jobs, they have to go through a search. When they want to buy some goods, you know, if you, especially the things like houses, if you want to buy a new house, if you want to buy a car, almost anything, you will go uh, searching now, mainly on the internet, but also might go around from shop to shop. If you're looking for a partner, either a business partner or even a social partner, you will search. And economics was not very good when I started my work to um, studying those uh, processes, that dynamic that taking place in real time. And that's the idea I had was to introduce frictions into those processes. Now, what do we mean by frictions? Friction is something like an obstacle in this uh, search process. When I say economics wasn't very good at studying these processes, what I really mean is that the e economics usually assume that if you want a job, you just jump into a job. If you want to find a partner, your partner will be standing there in front of you and will be the best person that you would ever want to be with. Whereas this is not real love. In real life, there are uh, impediments, uh, barriers to uh, looking for a, for a partner or for a job, you know, if you're looking for a job, there might be distances you need to travel, there might be new skills you need to learn. And all those things slow down the search activity. You, you don't find what you are looking for immediately. And you might reach the point where you stop and take whatever is available because you think that it takes too long, that it's, that maybe there isn't anything better. You settle for something less than what you started off with. And that that's what I studied, that, that's his search process that uh, fascinated me for <laughs> so many years. And could you explain your work on the analysis of markets with search frictions? Now, my work was basically about the search, you know, if you like, the abstract side of my work was about the search frictions and the whole idea of search as I outlined the pack a minute ago. But my real motivation, though, wasn't uh, either curiosity or some inspiration that, oh, I can write down these search tips and I uh, can solve them mathematically. My real inspiration was to study and understand a, a real world problem. I always took the view that economics should help find solutions that give more happiness to people. And if you look at what makes people unhappy, then there are big events in life. You know, obviously, death in the family or, or a friend will make you unhappy, divorce will make you unhappy. Although I don't know in some cases actually it makes people happy, but anyway, the idea is that in general, it always makes you unhappy if you like. Unemployment makes you unhappy. In fact, of all the economic events that we see, the one that gives most unhappiness to people is losing their job and remaining unemployed. And when I started my graduate study, unemployment was going up in Europe generally. Economists were not able to explain why, or they were not able to suggest solutions. So I sat back and thought, what are these unemployed people doing? And they're obviously miserable, but at the same time, they want a job. You know, they're looking for a job. It's the very definition of unemployment is that the people without a job are looking for one. So I sat down and started thinking, how would people go about looking for a job? Why don't they find a job immediately? You know, it's a problem of search. I'm searching for a job, but I don't know where the jobs that would be good for me are located. I don't know if that dream job I thought about in the middle of the night exists. I don't know even if it exists. I don't know if that job would be one that I would be able to do or that the employer who is offering it will want me if I go for an interview. All these are the frictions that you encounter in search. It kind of fascinated me that a problem that in the past people thought in the way that, uh, you know, the great economist uh, John Maynard Keynes said, uh, the real unemployment problem is when there are no jobs for people to take. Admittedly, yes, that's a real problem. But the thing is that there are jobs most of the time people could take. Maybe not enough, but at least there are jobs. And therefore, whether people take them or not very quickly, or whether they slow down, depends very much on the incentives they have to take the job. And that really makes it an economic problem because economics, if you ask someone what is economics, there is only one answer. It's the modeling of economic behavior on the basis of incentives. It's not about, you know, what if you study economics, 
old fashioned explanations are always the allocation of scarce resources is how an economy is run. Those things are true, but they are all building on the individual and on the incentives the individual has. And I thought that's it. You know, if I want to study unemployment, we look for the incentives that the unemployed have in looking for a job and getting it, look for the incentives that employers have in creating jobs, and offering them to the workers. Step by step, paper after paper, book after book, and that was it. You know, 30 years later, that was a, a complete program of work. And what are some of the most interesting or exciting applications of this work? Okay, well, I told you that my objective was to understand the problem of unemployment with a view to making the unemployed better off to find solutions to improve a lot of the unemployed. But at the same time, you know, I am an academic. And academics have to be driven by curiosity. Curiosity, why is this problem there and what can I do about it? How can I understand it? So most satisfying things about it see my work and how it's used it's along uh, two or three dimensions you know it's really satisfying when you see other academics especially young people entering the profession now reading your books your articles understanding what you're saying and using your models to uh, study further the problem of unemployment or other related problems because once you develop a theory of search and frictions then you realize that there are many many aspects both both of economic and even social behavior that it could be applied you know, it could be applied in finance for example you know, you're looking for that best investment you could apply it in uh, marriage markets as the economists call them you know finding the best partner it could be applied in commodity markets in labor markets so that is satisfying you know here is a framework that people are applying you know in the housing market they've been applied widely looking for a house so that's number one in terms of the um, of the academic side of me if you like in terms of the um, social political side that i thought there shouldn't be unemployment there should not be unhappiness for unemployment in our rich societies especially you know north america europe and so on so when i see policy being applied to unemployment by following the principles that uh, I outlined in all that work. Both I and the collaborators of mine and others who expanded the work and getting some real solutions in the sense that of reducing the length of time that people are unemployed, you know, helping them get the jobs, supporting them during unemployment with a well-structured unemployment benefit system so that they don't sink into poverty. And that is satisfying in the sense that you feel that you've done something for humanity. You say you, you feel, I, I mean, here is this big problem that was giving so much unhappiness to people. That maybe there are some people who are less unhappy now because of what you've done and understood. And that's good for someone engaged in research, I have to tell you.